I think it's time to get back coding on the YouTube leaderboard. I did not anticipate just how busy these last few months would be with a few of my videos doing real well and I wanted to strike while the iron was hot so I uploaded two to three videos a week for, I don't know, four or five weeks or something like that. I also have my boat that I'm building from the hull up so everything I have to build and I want to get that ready for summer. Should be done with that next month. And definitely the most important one, I feel like I should say this in a, uh, it's more of an announcement, I should say, I should announce this but I'm not the one to go too overboard with things so um I'm gonna be a dad in a couple months we're having a baby boy and we're just we're stoked so we had to do some prep work there and whatnot get the nursery ready and a lot of studying a lot of research just trying to figure out what I'm in for <laughs> so all that put together it really only allotted a couple hours a week <laughs> Typically every single other week, I would work on it every other Monday, as you can see by my GitHub contributions. So hang in there. We're in no rush to finish this. Obviously, we want it done as soon as possible, but however we can complete it without it interfering with everything else we have going on, that's the ultimate goal. Quick recap, the YouTube leaderboard is a leaderboard of y'all. Based on how much you interact with this channel, you have the opportunity to win some pretty cool prizes the more you do. This project is already live in a streamlit format on Ken G's channel. This is originally his idea. He executed it, but he decided to bring me on to build it into a full-fledged application. And he also brought on another YouTuber and data scientist, Tina Huang, to act as the data scientist on the project alongside him, whereas he's the project manager. The ultimate goal with this project is to be able to create a YouTube leaderboard, whereas anyone with a YouTube channel can go sign up and create their own leaderboard with their own viewers and commenters so they can do something in a similar fashion. But right now for the MVP, we're focusing solely on Ken's channel, Tina's channel, and my channel. So we left off last video just messing around building a MERN application, connecting to the database, using Ken and Tina's ETL to pull data into MongoDB, and pulling that data from MongoDB to our backend. Since then, I've just spent my time lollygagging around trying to figure out exactly how I wanted to go about this. I played with the front end a bit, navbar, layouts. Then I created some test data that was similar to what I was working with, where it was an object inside an array, and I wanted to be able to loop through that array using the object keys in order to display only on the front end. Then I decided to go ahead and connect the data from the back end to the front end so we could start iterating through and displaying some real data. But this was a bit of a mistake. I did get it all hooked up and decided to display some of that data just to prove it. I'm pretty sure this is why you use Axios, which I played with for a second before I just decided to fetch it through the API. Then I hit the Monday evening stand-up. This is where I explained to Ken and Tina how things are coming along and what they're up to as well. Unfortunately, Tina couldn't make it this time around, but that's fair since I've missed multiple stand-ups myself. We all understand that this project is a secondary thing that shouldn't interfere with our main jobs. And back to coding. I put together this incredibly complex API API, then fetch the comments with use effect, and down here looped through it to display in a table I put together. We had two main goals here. One was to successfully push the data from the back end to the front end, make sure our connections are all good, but also to be able to loop through that type of data structure. So now we know the data is flowing from the database through the back end to the front end, so it's time we can sift through the data to display what we actually want. Except, no. You remember when I said this was a mistake? It's not that I put together the pipeline, because we continue to use that, but we have zero use for this data on the front end. For some reason in my mind, we were going to take this data in order to formulate the engagement points and take what we need from this data, which has everything we need, in order to display in the leaderboard, but that's a horrible way to go about it. I don't exactly remember what I thought. I knew I was gonna to have to have some sort of data structure with just the viewers and not just other comments and take the data from the comments in order to populate that new data structure full of viewers, but I don't know what I was thinking all along the way. I felt like I just wanted to get a little bit of progress done to feel good about myself and then I could continue working. So I decided to take a step back and really figure out exactly how I wanted to go about this. So. We have this data structure of comments, and within each comment has all of the data for the user, the amount of likes, the amount of replies, and a lot of other data that we actually don't need, but it has everything we need. It's just isolated as each individual comment, 
Whereas we want to create a data structure that is each, each individual user. So that's what we did. We created a data structure of commenters. Everyone who comments is going to be entered into this data structure. And each commenter is going to contain their display name, their unique channel ID, an array of your comment IDs to prevent any duplication, and then an object of engagement points, which will contain your like count, your reply count, and your comment count. Unfortunately, I didn't get the coding process on video, but that doesn't mean I can't show you what's going on. Just so you all understand, I know there are going to be some things that I missed, some code that I did not go over. This is a lot of work, weeks and weeks worth of work condensed down into a single video, but I want to share as much as possible for this project. So if there's anything that I skimmed over, if you have any questions about it, just ask it down in the comment section. Hopefully I can help. All right, so this is really the main file for what we've been working on here. And I want to talk about the data structure first, since we've been kind of talking about that a little bit. And this is basically our data structure right here. I say basically because this is just a single object where that's going to be pushed into our viewers array. So each viewer is going to have a channel ID It is going to have a comment ID It is going to have a image URL, which I did not mention that earlier. That's just to display your little image URL right next to your comment right now, your display name, as well as your engagement points, which this is an object in and of itself with reply count, like count and comment count. Whereas the comment count that is adding one to your total comment count, which is taking into account the actual comment in which we are adding this in because remember our current data what we will be pulling down is really just an array of comments so we're going to be uh, iterating through those comments for every one that is made by you well we have to give you engagement points one engagement point for every single comment that you leave on a video and then of course we have to push this new viewer to our viewers array let me make more sense of this by going through the whole entire function what we have here so we have our function get viewer data where we're passing the parameter data and this this data that we are passing in over here in um in our route is comments in comments that is all of this data right here that's a little better for y'all huh? our items are within our items array obviously but then within our function let's get back to this we have our viewers array where i said we're going to be storing each individual viewer with all of their information and then we have our for loop so this is not complete obviously since i hard coded in 41 but within our for loop as we're iterating through each individual comment with all of the comment data that that entails so here's one comment obviously we have a lot of comment data that you can see for that single comment well we have our author channel id so as we iterate through, we iterate through and we get our author channel ID value. We get our comment ID, we get our author profile image, our display name, everything that goes into our data structure. We are just assigning it to a variable right here so we don't have messy code all down here. And I will, I think have to put what, this whole entire for loop inside a for loop so I can iterate through each, each and every um, video comment section, because as it sits right now, this zero right here means one video. If we were to get data from multiple videos, like three, then obviously it would be zero, one, two. So I'll have to iterate through multiple videos so we can go through all the comments in every single, but right now I just hard coded this in for what we're doing right now. But then after we declare those variables and assign them values, we have our if statement. I have a lot of comments here to help us out and not only to help us out, this is just kind of my form of pseudocode. I came in here and I added all of this before I even wrote any code just to give myself a better understanding of what needs to happen. And then I left them in here, not only for y'all, but just to make sure that Ken and Tina know exactly what's going on. <laughs> So this if statement, it starts out if viewer does not exist, and that is within our viewers array. And that means that this will be your first time ever commenting on the channel. So we need to create you, the commenter, the viewer, we need to create your object. So with that, we'll create an object for you and push you into the uh, viewers array. So now you're part of the leaderboard. However, if you already exist, so you've already made a comment, You've already been run through all of this. This is your second or third or a thousandth comment on the channel. Obviously, we don't we need to make anything new for you. We just need to update 
your current standings. So what we do in here is actually we got to make sure that this comment is a unique comment because we don't want duplicate comments. That's what this if statement is for. So if user exists, but this comment that we're looking at does not exist, then we want to do this because if it already exists, we don't have to do anything. We've already counted everything in your data. So we're good. But if it doesn't exist, that means this is a new comment within viewers. We got to add the comment ID to the comment ID array. Therefore, we don't duplicate comments in the future. And then we have to update our engagement points. So we have to add the reply count for this comment to the reply count, the total like count for this comment to your total like count. And then we have to add one to comment count for this particular comment that we're going over. And that'll make up your engagement points. It'll just add all together. And also note that this if statement is actually not being used right now because I don't have a data set with duplicate commenters. So what I'll probably do is go in MongoDB and just adjust the JSON data instead of just finding a new video with someone commenting multiple times on that same video. But that's why this may or may not be correct. I haven't been able to test it. I haven't been able to test this if statement. So ignore, ignore it, but don't ignore it, but ignore that. And then of course we got to return viewers because that's what we got to do. And we come over, kind of showed y'all this previously, but at localhost 5000 viewers, we are calling in that function after importing it, get viewer data from viewerdata.js. And then we're calling it right here, get viewer data comments. And that is what we see over here. Actually, if I refresh it, since I changed it back, we're good. Now, what else did we do? Okay, we did, I actually did some front end work, not anything pretty, but I actually rerouted the whole entire pipeline that was pushing all of this comment information up to the front end and I replaced that with the actual data that we need in the front end, which is all of you and all of your data. And we have it up here. Now I have this hard coded as zero for some reason. If I put I in there, I forget something happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, I got to work. I got to work something out here, but um, just for demonstration purposes, this is where it'll iterate through every single person's information. And I just wanted to show y'all that it was connected to the front end. Well, we already had the pipeline and everything figured out. We have the iteration figured out with this minor aspect right here. And that's what I'll be doing in the next video. And actually speaking of the next video, I don't know if I've showed y'all this, I may have, but I wanna show you again, because next video, I will be kind of making it look somewhat pretty. I don't know if it's going to be exactly like this, but this is going to be the overall idea. So imagine this as Ken's leaderboard. Whoever's leaderboard it is will be displayed up here. And these are the community leaders. So this is you. If you all you have the most engagement points, then you are in first. Your image URL, your, your image will display right there, your profile picture. Your name obviously will display where it says your name. And then your engagement points will be right here. I won't be worrying about the bar chart just yet. I also won't be worrying about the rank changes just yet. So I'll, you'll probably just focus on this box right here, as you can see. And then we'll have this filter process. So right now this is annual leaders. I don't know if that means the past year or year to date, but that's not that important right now. And then this is monthly leader. So you'll be able to filter by year. You'll be able to filter by month. Uh, I don't know about by week. We'll figure all that out. But this is the basic uh, UI for the leaderboard itself. There's not much else that is going to be going into this because as I said before, I mean, really the main product will have a login page for the user and then their leaderboard. I don't know what else they really have to do considering they're gonna be hooking up through their Google profile. We don't need them to be able to customize their name or customize their profile picture because we'll be able to get that when they log in using their Gmail account, which will be their YouTube account. So when they log in through their Gmail tied to their YouTube, we'll be able to pull over the profile picture that they use on their YouTube and their name that they use on their, on their YouTube. So. All of that will be simple. Right now, we don't even need the login or sign up page. We just need the leaderboard, and that's really it. That's the gist of what we have going on over here. Obviously, there's a few tweaks and whatnot that we have to do with our actual code, but the gist of it is there. And the next step will be to work through some of this code because it's necessary in order to properly display it on the front end. But we also want to go ahead and work on the front end and make it a little bit pretty, which I actually don't want to do. I hope someone else will do it, but. I guess I'll do it. <laughs>
If you like this video, we're gonna have multiple parts to this Coding the YouTube Leaderboard series, which I'll probably just continue to title Coding the YouTube Leaderboard Part 2, and then Part 3, and then Part 4, so no one can get confused. I don't know when the next one will come out, but subscribe so you get notified when it does. Like this video if you liked it, and I'll see you on the next one.